so thanks, Ian, for the intro. Um, and I have some very big shoes to fill um, stepping in. Um, so I want to talk to you about real-time transit delays. Um, I'm Brandon Liu, like I said, or like Ian said. Um, to introduce myself, first I want to talk a little about, uh, about my background and some of the other work I do. Um, I do a lot of data visualization and mapping and cartography. Um, so one of the projects I worked on recently was building ages in New York City. Um, I'm creating a map of all the buildings in New York City. It's using a public data set called Pluto um, and matching it up with OpenStreetMap. Um, something else I'm really interested in is, is really novel representations of physical data. Um, this is a project Ian has seen, which is all the bike routes in San Francisco and how steep they are. Um, and this is all from OpenStreetMap vector data and plotted in WebGL. So you can check this out in your browser. Um, another project that I'm really excited about recently has uh, been totally different. Um, it is about the NBA and rap music. Um, I wanted to see if there's a correlation between how many points you score in the NBA and how often you get name dropped in hip hop songs. <laughs> um, so here's Kobe Bryant, he's doing pretty well and here's all the times he's mentioned. So the theme I want to get across is all these projects are about decisions and how people make decisions based on data. So in the case of the bike map, I'm thinking that, um, so I live in the sunset and if I want to get down to downtown, I probably want to take the wiggle and not like one of these steep routes. In this project, I'm really hoping, like my dream is Kanye West sees this and he decides that Blake Griffin, he needs his own song or something because he's scoring a lot of points. Um, anyways, so these decisions are, um, so sort of my motivation for why I do data visualization. And one that I do all the time is trying to decide how I get to downtown. Um, so I actually live by two routes. So I live by the N and I live by the 71. And 71's like a bus and the N is the light rail line. And the N is good because it's really fast, but it's not fast all the time because there's these horrible delays that happen all the time on light rail. It's not grade separated. It gets stuck in one place. Um, you can watch the Twitter feed from SFMTA and you'll see like 10 of these a day where it's saying like, the line is completely backed up. You can't get anywhere. So what I really want to know is how I can visualize these delays in transit because this single number does not tell me about that. It just tells me it's going to come in 19 minutes. It doesn't tell me it's going to take me an hour to get there. Um, so this data is all available in real time through Nextbus. Um, they have a free API. They also have this animation on their website, which gives you an idea of how delayed it is. You can kind of see like there's a pretty long delay between like downtown two trains. Um, but I didn't really think this was good enough at a glance. So a quote that really motivated me is actually from Dijkstra, who is a pretty famous computer science professor. He wrote this about code. Um, his theory is that, so our mind, it works really well on static information, but it's very hard uh, to visualize these things over time. Um, and that's kind of about programming, but I thought it was actually really insightful for, for visualization. Um, but you have this problem, which is that you have this 2D data, and then you have a time dimension. So you kind of have run out of dimensions to plot. And I found the answer actually in, in Tufti's book. Um, there is this graph from E.J. Mary from the 1800s of a train schedule from Paris to Lyon. And at the top it has Paris, at the bottom it has Lyon, and each train is one line. So you're able to see that some trains are faster, some trains are slower, and you can also kind of get an idea of what so all the trains are at some point in time on the x-axis. Um, so I wanted to apply this idea to Muni in particular and the Anjuta line. Um, there is some quirks. First of all, the path from Paris to Lyon is not a straight line um, in reality. It actually looks something like this. Um, so the trick is to use a technique called linear referencing, which is um, a function that's implemented by a lot of like open source libraries. The intuition is that your start point is zero. Your end point is one. And all the points in between are interpolated. So right there, um, you have 
halfway is 0 0.5. And another kind of detail is points off the line. Um, you find the closest point on the line, and that becomes its value. So that's one really easy way to break down these routes from two dimensions into one dimension. Um, this is implemented in a C++ library called Geos, which is open source. Um, there's a lot of popular bindings for it. Um, the most popular one's probably Shapely, which is in Python. Um, but you should definitely check it out if you're doing Geo stuff. Um, so I plotted this um, for the Anjuda, and this is from the GTA, from, from the Google Transit feed specification that some of the other speakers mentioned, which is schedules for the entire Anjuda route. And you can kind of see that um, at the top is Soma, at the bottom is Ocean Beach. Um, and these lines are really consistent across the day on the time axis, but everyone knows that's like not anything near reality. Um, so uh, the next step was really to get real-time data into this, so we can see the actual versus predicted times. So Nextbus has an XML API, um, and the things we care about are the latitude and the longitude and the time of the report. Um, the one issue with Nextbus is it does not have any historical data. The only data that's available is, in, is, is at that instant in time. So I wrote a little web service. Um, I can talk about it. I actually wrote it in Go, which is like this new fashionable programming language. Um, but it, so if you're doing real-time stuff, I really recommend it because it's really good at concurrency and dealing with serialization formats. Um, so, the idea, so the idea was to pull Nextbus, um, do this linear referencing, um, serve it out to the browser. And um, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. It was about 350 lines of code, single process, no database. And the end result is something like this, which is here's a time lapse of the end. Um, you can see that this long one on the left is more or less on schedule, but then the one after it is totally delayed. And it's in fact, it's so delayed, it's like pushing back the one behind it. So this is a visual representation of like the bus bunching problem where we have these two vehicles that are both delayed and one is completely blocked by the other. Um, so anyways, this is all in real time and it's live on my site if the internet works. Cool. Right now it's about 8 p.m. and this should update in real time if you see it flash. Yeah, there one moved. Uh, you can sort it by inbound, outbound, you can toggle the schedule. The other nice thing is I have the entire history for the day, for the past 12 hours, so you can scroll back in time and you can see all the vehicles that travel uh, like along this route. Um, since this is from today, I thought I'd point out that I think on the inbound, yeah, there was a moment where it was completely screwed. Like <laughs> this train right here, like it just sat there for 10 minutes at Embarcadero. And I mean, this follows your intuition pretty well because everyone knows like the subway gets jammed because there's like five lines in there. And I mean, look at this. There's like trains like not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, I have found this really useful in making decisions about like, should I even bother getting on the end or not? Um, right, and then here's one from a few days ago where there was an accident on Irving. Um, and there was no trains moving for like an hour. So you can see how um, this historical data and this representation can help you make decisions on what transit line to take. Um, that's all I have. Um, if you're working with urban data or transit data or rap music, or rap music then I'd um, really like to talk to you. You can contact me, Twitter, website, email, pretty simple. Thanks. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Ben? Um, I was looking at the next plus data too. Does it, when you give it like the Unix time, if you give it a time in the past, it also gives you information. Is not is that not valid? Or um, I believe it's it has a max of fifteen minutes. Oh, okay. So you can only query up to fifteen minutes in the past. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because like it gets quite large. Yeah. Um, these are sampled at I think ten second increments. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine for an entire day, it could be like pretty large for one response. Exactly. What do you think is the updating frequency of the next bus feed? 
Um, for a single bus. If there's anyone here from Muni that can tell me, <laughs> I'd really like to know. 90 seconds at max. 90 seconds? About 100 meters, so we have the kids tribute. Yeah, I mean, there's also issues where um, it seems like if it goes in a tunnel, it won't report its location for a while. Um, also, I feel like the data collection is somewhat manual in that sometimes a vehicle will be tagged inbound when it's actually going outbound. So on my chart, you'll see one just going like totally the opposite direction. And that's like really weird. Question? Yeah, uh, did you find the buses are, are more reliable than the um, duty train? I haven't actually tried this for buses. I'm only working on light rail right now um, because, so the data is easier for light rail. Like the route is very well defined. Um, I'd be curious to apply this to like all the bus lines and see which yeah. ones are most of it. You probably would not have a backup problem to the same extent because these go around. Right, exactly. Yeah, for Muni, it's like for light rail that's not great separated, it seems like a huge problem. Except for electric buses. Say again? I'm just saying, he, he, like the one California gets backed up every day. And just, uh, they they go around the other though. Not very often. I, 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 I,
Um, <laughs> at one point, I had like three days of data in there, and it was just like sluggish. But I imagine the gains I would get by doing path simplification would be huge. Um, I think in some of the benchmarks, if you can simplify like just using the most basic algorithm, you can get like an 80% like reduction in how many points there are on an SVG path. And like that I think is the key to like making scalable visualizations like this. I mean, it's hard because you're modeling the real world and like these locations are very noisy. Um, so you kind of have to be smart about how you like, uh, how you filter it. <laughs>